Okay, we can also factorise higher degree polynomials. We'll do these ones as quick as we can here. So we've got the first one, a, p, z is to the power of 4. We actually use all the same techniques that we've used previously. Uh, the thing to look for is that often, with these types of polynomials, try and do substitutions. Okay, for substitution, substitutions of z squared. Because once you get something down to z squared, uh, you're dealing with quadratics, then you can use, you know, quadratic formula or other methods, uh, completing the square to solve for that. So with the first one, what I can see here is z to the power of 4, that actually is z squared, all squared. Because when you're dealing with powers, any powers outside of a bracket of a power, okay, actually multiply together. So that will give you the 4. So this is a hidden um, z squared. Okay, so generally what I would do for something like this is I would let z squared equal a, or whatever you want. And let's do the first question. So for example a, we've got p of z equals z to the fourth minus 16, which equals, now I'm going to let z squared equal a, okay, so what that means is a squared equals z to the power of 4. I'm going to replace this now, I've got a squared minus 16, and this is a beautiful uh, difference of squares. So a plus the square root of 16, which is 4, and a minus the square root of 16, which is 4. So now what I can do is sub back, sub back my a equals z squared. So I've got z squared plus 4, and z squared minus 4. Now this second one here will be easy, this is going to be difference of squares again. This one unfortunately doesn't have the negative, so it's a bummer, but remember you can uh, manufacture a negative by taking what you have originally, putting a negative where you want it, and then multiplying by i squared. So you're introducing the negative. So now both of these things here, both of them are a difference of squares. So we can now factor them out nicely. So we'll have z plus or minus the square root of this. And the square root of this, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of i squared is i. So we z plus or minus that. Remember these are all real coefficients as well. So any complex pairs here will be conjugate pairs. And this one, this is difference of squares, but it's real, both real. So z plus or minus 2. So what you've done there is you've factorised something that looked quite sort of simple but really had a hidden z squared inside there to get your four uh, linear factors. And remember to look for how many linear factors you have. It should match the power, and it does here, the power is four. Second example here, we're going to do a similar thing again. So looking at b, we've got pz equals z to the power of six minus one. Now with this one, you could actually identify or do the same type of thing that you've done here, which is a substitution. Um, and you could do two substitutions here. You could either look for a z squared. Um, there is another one that works here as well though. So I'll show you with both. If you let a equal z squared, what you'll find is that a cubed equals z to the power of 6. Now that's cool because that means you're then working with a, a, a cubic. okay? But that's actually not going to be as nice as working with a, um, with a, a quadratic if you can. So the other option here is to let a equal z to the power of 3, so that a squared equals z to the power of 6, like that. So what we're going to do is actually use this version here. Both ways will work, just a little bit more work the other way. So what we're going to look at here, we've got z to the power of 6 minus 1 equals, now a to the power of, in this case, 2 minus 1. So that means that we have a plus 1 and a minus 1. And then substituting back in now, we can put our z cubes in. So this is actually a difference of squares. If you look at the original expression, this one, just like this one over here was, this is here a difference of squares again. And so the, the key to identify here is that, that both of these, even though they look a little bit different, both of these questions are actually both difference of squares questions. Okay, so now we've got two polynomials here, both of these now are cubic. Because they're um, similar, okay, we've just got that different sign, let's deal with them one at a time. So let's deal with the first one, we've got z cubed plus 1. So for z cubed plus 1, 
you can see here that we've got all real coefficients. So what that means is that you're going to have at least one real factor. Okay, and we can do that, we can figure that out. By looking at that, you can probably just about figure what that is. Remember, start with, you know, um, low numbers, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, to figure that out. And you can see here that if z equals negative 1, you would have negative 1 cubed plus 1, which equals 0. So that means that z minus 1 is a solution. It's shorthand for solution. So therefore, we actually have a factor. Remember that the factor is always the opposite sign, z plus 1. Okay, so now what we're going to do is some division to figure out what the rest of this looks like now. So we've got z plus 1, and how many times does that go into z cubed plus 1? I'm actually going to put in the remaining powers here with zeros as placeholders so that I don't get confused about uh, with my division. And let's do our division. So this is for other factors, or for the other factor. So we've got z cubed, I'll do this all in a different blue. So we've got z squared, because z squared times z is z cubed, and z squared times 1 is z squared, so we've got z squared there. Take all of that away from the top line, you'll get 0, and then you'll get negative z squared here. Bring everything else down, and just move these out of the way. So now the next line, we've got negative z squared. To get negative z squared from a z, you'd have to multiply by negative z. Negative z times z is negative z squared. Negative z times 1 is negative z. Okay, subtract all of that from the above. We've got negative z squared, and this is going to be plus. So um, plus z squared, that's 0, plus z. And move your last one down. And the cool thing you'll notice here is that this is the same as this. So there's only one left here. 1 times z plus 1 will give me 1 times z and 1 times 1, which is 0. So that's awesome. That means that we've actually now factored this down so that z cubed plus 1 equals z plus 1 oops, and z squared minus z plus 1. Now this second part here we're actually going to need to factorise down a bit further. Now remember looking back at what you started with, this is a power of 6 problem, so you're going to have 6 factors here. But the key thing is, because this has got all real coefficients, all real coefs, any of the complex number solutions will be in conjugate pairs. So that's going to help us out a little bit too. So let's have a look. Um, again, we're going to use complete the square here. So I'll just do this over here. So we've got z plus 1 as the first factor, z squared minus z, halve the middle thing, which is 1, middle coefficient, which is 1. So halve it, half, square it, which is quarter, add it, subtract it, add on the rest. And we've got z squared. Remember that all of the first three terms should be a perfect square. And that's going to be z plus, or z minus, I should say, because of the minus here. z minus a half. So z minus a half, all squared. I'm just going to put some big brackets here for this whole section. Minus a quarter. I'm going to turn this 1 into 4 over 4, so I can work with it a bit easily, easily, more easily. And we've got z minus a half squared. This is going to be 3 over 4. Remember that it would be great if you could have a negative sign there. So we're going to manufacture one. Manufacture the negative, but then multiply by i squared. Now you can make sure that you're bringing everything that's here into that bracket as a plus or minus square root. So you're going to have z plus 1. And then you've got z minus a half plus the square root of this, which is root 3 over the square root of 4, which is 2, square root of i is i. And the second factor will be the conjugate pair of that, minus a half, minus square root of 3 is 3, square root of 4 is 2, square root of i squared is i. So that will be our first three factors. Okay, That was just dealing with z cubed uh, plus 1. Now for our second factor, we've got z cubed minus 1. Okay, So for z cubed minus 1, you're going to see that you have the same kind of situation here happening. 
okay but you're going to end up with um, opposites so we can look at that oops some working there so we've got z cubed minus one and great idea at this point stop the video see if you can finish this through without um, following my working okay so z cubed minus one again we can look for a real solution here because these are all real coefficients and you'll find that z equals one is a solution because 1 cubed minus 1 equals 0. So that means that we have a factor of z minus 1. Remember over here our factor was z plus 1. So you can probably guess here all the signs are going to be different. Okay, so that's our factor. Now we're going to um, work through some division, just as we did before. So our division, and we've got here z minus 1 dividing it through z cubed and this is a minus one here so 0 z squared 0 z minus 1 we'll do this division nice and quick so z squared which if you z cubed minus z squared subtract that so that's a positive z squared and then we've got 0 z bringing that down and looking at this we'd need to have a positive z this time so that gives us z squared minus z and subtracting that we'll have a positive z minus one and that is awesome because that's what we wanted okay so we've now got this situation here okay now looking at this you've got two pluses okay so we're going to complete the square so we've got I should actually write down what we've got so far so z cubed minus one equals the real factor and the quadratic second factor We'll complete the square on this. So we've got z minus 1, z squared plus z. The middle thing is 1, halve it, square it, which is a quarter, add it, subtract it, add on the rest. Now this time the only difference that you'll see here is that this is going to be, instead of in our previous example, we had a minus here, so we got z minus a half, it's going to be z plus a half. All the other working here will be the same, so we're actually going to end up with the same thing here. So we'll just go through that bit. So we've got z minus 1. Then we've got the perfect square here, which is z plus a half this time. And here we have uh, plus 3 quarters. And you know, manufacturing that i uh, in the sign here, so 3 on 4 i squared, gives us a finally factorised z plus a half plus the square root of everything and you can see that this matches what you had before except the sign in front of the half is different minus root 3 over 2i so what we've done is we've found three factors and you know it's always a good idea to write down or to think about in your head how many factors you would expect so for z cubed minus 1 you'd expect three factors we've got three factors and a conjugate pair for z cubed plus 1 You'd also expect three factors because the power is three and you can see we got three factors there and we know that we started with z to the power of six so we should have six factors altogether. So our original question was z to the power of six minus one so we can actually finish that off here so therefore p of z equals z to the power of six minus one equals let's write down all our factors we know that the factors here are plus one and then the minus halves so we've got z plus 1, z minus a half plus root 3 on 2i, its conjugate pair which is minus root 3 on 2i and then these factors here z minus 1. And in your book you'll probably see that they um, put the two real factors first. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you've got them all there. I'm just writing it this way because that's how um, I've gone through it in the working. Plus a half plus root 3 over 2i. So a very long question to get your one, two, three, four, five, six factors for this one, but you've got the right number of factors to what you'd expect. So that would be the suggestion that this is correct. Um, again, remember you can use your CAS. So if you were to use your CAS, um, we've got z to the power of six minus one. I'll just do this on a new page. So if we put in C solve, remember we go to menu and then go to algebra, complex, um, solve or factor, we'll do factor. 
z to the power of 6 using the little hat okay and it was z to the power of 6 minus 1 what you'll find when you do that is that you're going to get this kind of expression now be careful the reason I did it this way is so you can see to get your answer you have to make sure you put a comma and a z so it knows what to factorize it'll do this now uh, with the complex roots so you can see here we've got z plus or minus 1 and then all of our half and root 3 factors and if we scroll all the way through you've got 1, 2, 3, 4 of those factors all occurring in conjugate pairs so our final answer here is correct for that z to the power of 6 minus 1